We ready, gentlemen? Okay. Thank you all for coming. Uh, those that uh, could not be here today and that are listening to the live stream, uh, thank you for participating also. Uh, I am Raul Garcia, R-A-U-L, uh, one of the public information officers for the Arizona Department of Public Safety. And we are here to talk about the Pine Top Lakeside Police Department and their officer that was involved in a shooting and one of their sergeants that was also at that scene of a domestic disturbance. If you recall, this occurred back on October 8th. Uh, as you may know already, uh, state detectives are investigating. We're going to limit uh, to uh, several questions today, just a few questions, because this case is still under investigation. Uh, Chief David Sargent with the police department is here. His last name is spelled S-A-R-G-E-N-T. He's going to ID his officer, talk about his injuries, and also identify a citizen that helped out on that day. And also, are there re problems with recruitment in some rural areas in Arizona? And so with us to talk about these matters is the Pine Top Lakeside Police Chief, David Sargent. Mr. Garcia, thank you for your time and to DPS. Thank you again for uh, affording us this venue to hold this event. Thank you all for being here. As we're all aware, back on October 8th, our officers responded to a call where <clears throat> the mother of an individual called to state that her son was intoxicated, that she was in fear for that subject's wife. He had threatened to shoot her and to shoot his mother, who was calling from Tucson. Two of our officers responded. When they responded, uh, Officer David Hummer and Sergeant Tomaducci encountered male subject who at some point in that encounter began firing at them. Officer Hummer was struck in the right leg just above and inside the knee. Both officers returned fire and retreated to cover away from the suspect's front door to treat Officer Hummer's injury. <clears throat> Once additional support arrived on scene, we put a perimeter on the house, and at some point later, uh, we located the suspect who was found deceased. I can't s express enough from my heart the gratitude that I have for a citizen who is close by named Chuck Copeland, who quickly came to the aid of Officer Hummer, who was down. He retrieved a leather belt and put a tourniquet on Officer Hummer's leg, which probably changed the outcome of this incident. Officer Hummer was transported to Summit Medical Center, stabilized in Florida Banner University in Phoenix. He there, went under, he there underwent a lengthy surgery to include a procedure to rebuild and restore vascular access to his leg. Officer Hummer was released from the hospital October 11th and is recovering at home. Officer Hummer is a 10-year veteran of law enforcement and has served with the Pine Top Lakeside Police Department for the last four years. I again would like to thank the Department of Arizona Department of Public Safety who has stepped up in, in many different ways here from the beginning to, the, to where we are in this, and as well as the numerous agencies in northwest, uh, northeast Arizona. We can't do our job when we have critical incidents like this without help from the outside coming in. You know, last week, U.S. Attorney General testified before Congress about the alarming increase in violent crimes over the past two years, and we have felt that on the street. It's something that you can almost touch. Rural Arizona is not exempt from this. <clears throat> We're seeing a spike in calls for service with an increase in potential for violence and fewer officers to handle them. The director was out a couple of weeks ago with the sheriff and the chief of Phoenix and talked about the difficulty recruiting in the Phoenix area. And in a rural area, that's just magnified all the more. It's virtually near impossible. It's my concern that response times for calls involving violent crimes as they continue to go up will be significantly delayed because we just don't have the resources to deal with them. That concludes my uh, prepared remarks, and I'm ready to take any questions should anybody have any. Chief, what does that change the outcome? Do you mean that you say that all 
I believe that Chuck Copeland absolutely without question saved Officer Hummer's life. Yes. Hummer was recently shot. You've had other incidents that have, have, have occurred in the last 10 years. Can you give us an idea of how things have changed in the last 10, 15 years? The biggest problem you had was recruitment. And do you think it may be a time for a public safety task of some sort? So let's start with the first question. I've been at Pine Top Lakeside since 2002, so about 15 years of service I've, I've given to the town of Pine Top Lakeside. It's a beautiful place. Uh, when I went up there, I, I thought, oh, here you go. Here's policing the way that, you know, we all grew up with uh, Andy Griffith's show, and this is how, how policing should be done, where you follow the case from beginning to end. I had some opportunity to work Metro where you were going from call to call and you never really saw what happened to things after uh, the initial report. Very different in a rural area, you are actually following through that case and you often know uh, what the outcome of the case is. Since the time that I started, just in the last 10 years, our call for service volumes increased about 40, per it's over 40%. I can safely say 40%. So that's just in the last 10 years. And when I started back there, you could uh, sit probably for an hour and not hear a car on that highway, and now it's nonstop. So to that's to answer your first question. The second question again, if you'd please. I, you know, I'm not exactly sure what that's tied to, and I don't even know that the Attorney General knew exactly what that was tied to, and that's a man that has fingers on the stats of everything. What I know is that I've talked to people from California to Boston, and, and without me soliciting comment, they're saying the same thing, that they felt a change in the, the public that we're dealing with. And I'm not exactly sure why that is, so I can't give an answer as to why that is. But we have noticed it where we are. Um, the people that oversee our police department, we have a very good council and town manager who are have open ears to this, and um, I, I believe in the near future, and in fact now we're doing things to take care of that. I think the last w question was something uh, about a tax. You know, I'm not going to get into taxes and non-taxes, but everybody has seen the movie where someone gets arrested and they're not happy about it, and they say, you know, my my taxes pay your salary. And Pine Top Lake said that's not quite the case. Um, we have property taxes, but none of the property tax ever goes to the police department. We, are, we subsist on sales tax revenue. So if we have a good year of sales and we have a lot of visitors to the mountain, then there's a little extra money. Um, if we don't, then we're moving things around to try to make things work. <clears throat> My department's allotted for 18 officers. Two are out on special assignment that must be there. They're with Major Crimes Apprehension Team and a state gang task force. And those two operations not only slow down what's going on in our town, but when something like this happens on, on October 8th, we can call on them and they bring all of their forces to bear. So I can't, I can't in good conscience bring those officers back. That's two down off the road. I've got two recruits in the academy. They won't see service, and they're brand new until April, May. So that's two more down. I have two on medical leave. One of those would be Officer Hummer. That's two more down. And um, I'm trying to think. You, you kind of caught me off guard on that one. But, but there are uh, 
two in the academy, two on special assignment, two on um, uh, medical leave, and, s and since 2006, I think we've had one officer and one evidence tech cut from the budget. So we're about six or seven down, boots on the ground from where we are in 2006. So um, we, we are working towards getting that back to where it needs to be, and there's open ears and we're moving forward. Um, we're grateful that our officer is healthy and safe and is recovering. I thank you again for everybody being here. And at, at this time, I think we'll call it a... One more question about Officer Morton. Just one more. I, uh, what I know about Officer Hummer is that he is, he's walking with a walker, and he can start to bend that knee a little bit. Um, he is recovering at home, and the, that is the last medical update. You know, you see a doctor, you know, every couple weeks. So the last one that we got is that um, as far as his long-term prognosis, I think that's your opinion, Chairman. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate it. And as always, gentlemen, if you have any questions for the department, uh, we can certainly forward them also to the police department. Uh, please email pio underscore unit at azdps.gov.